Live from Idner Architects, this is Issues in Education. Here to lead a roundtable discussion with leaders in education is moderator John Carney on KTRS. We will go right to left. Bill Bass is here, an innovation coordinator for Parkway School District and also a board member of the ISTE. Wait, wait, I have it. The ISTE, which is the International Society of Technology in Education. Bill, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, also, Stephanie Madlinger, Director of Education and Innovation uh, from our host at METC and Education Plus. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for putting this on. I guess, is this the first exhaling you've done, or are we not there yet? I- I'm not exhaling yet. Not, not there yet. yet. <laughs> okay. And Christine Terry, Executive Director of EMINTS, which is Enhancing Missouri's Instructional Networked teaching, teaching Strategies. Obviously, we have some explaining to do all of this. Welcome to you also. Thank you. Let's talk about this conference and as far as the different educational conferences that go on who is this open to and why do you have it? Is it the teachers? Is it the superintendents? Is it some students? Who did you gather for this? Pretty much anybody that's interested in educational technology. So for the most part, it is educators, and they could be anywhere from pre-K through higher ed. But we also have community members, and we actually have some community uh, service learning associates, some people that are actually students here as well. Now, do you find there's a wide variance from school district to school district as in in regard to what technology they have access to? Absolutely. Across the board, there is definitely, there is access problems as well as equity, honestly, of what's going on in our communities. And Bill, I think you could talk to that as the innovation coordinator at Parkway, which is a big school district too. Is it difficult to even things out? And just when you get a school outfitted with, you know, Wi-Fi or tablets or e-books or whatever, the technology's already changed again. Sure. It's, it's one of those things that we have to keep up with. And as we, as we look across the board, not just in Parkway, but as we look across the entire area and the region, the state, um, and even nationally, everybody's trying to keep up. And as you said, we're, we're, you, you adopt something, a technology, whether that's a laptop or um, upgrade your wireless infrastructure. Um, it's a never-ending quest to, to really serve kids. And one of, the, one of the most important pieces of that is to, is to really get to that equity piece and to give kids experiences regardless of what school district they go to, regardless of what classrooms they're in, and regardless of what teacher that they have. Because that's where that's where kind of the rubber beats the road. We put in a lot of effort into giving them uh, devices and access, um, but we also have to we also have to really work with teachers in order to get them to the point where not they're not only comfortable but they're ready to let kids embrace it and use it in that way. And that's what METC is really all about. It's about giving those teachers opportunities to come together, have conversation, learn from each other, and then take that back to their classrooms. I would think it would be super smart for the manufacturers, for the Apples, for the <laughs> Samsungs, for the Toshibas, for the people that crank this stuff out to make sure that the teachers and students are armed with the latest in technology because going forward, they become the target market. They're the ones that are going to buy this stuff as they go on. Do you get much help from manufacturers? Do you find a lot of donations from Apple, for example? Sure. Every every manufacturer does a lot of different things, and a lot of times um, they there's grants all over the place. Some of those are from manufacturers. Some of those are from organizations that are nonprofits. But really what... So many, so many organization manufacturing companies are doing right now is they are trying to give teachers opportunities for professional development around their products, and they're tapping teachers to help other teachers do that. So they're using that kind of train the trainer model where I learn something about you know name your name your product, and then I will go and kind of spread that goodness and that love for that product to the rest of my colleagues right. and at a conference like this. Christine Terry with us too from Emins and 
uh, we can you probably best address the teacher's perspective on this. We've talked about do the students get the stuff and how do you level it all out. But from an educator's perspective, you, you're dealing with teachers that may have different philosophies and different uh, lesson plans that they've laid out for school. So how do you customize it for each strategy that each educator has? Well, the technology in the classroom is a is a great tool for teachers to use, but it's that. It's a tool. And so the approach is to say, how can we use this tool to accelerate learning, to deepen learning, to give those kids the problem-solving experience that they would experience out in the real world? So it's not really about the tool. It's about the teaching. And the teachers bring that with them. They bring their experiences and their skills to the table, and then they use that technology to enhance it. So is that what you guys do, like like show them how to implement that where it doesn't become a crutch for the educator? Absolutely. So what we do at Emens is we work with teachers. We do professional development around how to use that technology well. And we partner with manufacturers. Um, we're in the midst of a big $12 million grant serving districts all across the nation. And the point of that is to say for a technology manufacturer, unless a teacher and the students are able to use that technology well for learning, then that technology doesn't really have value to the school, the students, or the parents. So it's not just about the machine. It's about how you use it in the classroom. Um, Those kids, not only do the teachers need to know how to use it, but the kids need to know how to use it too. The kids seem to be the first yeah, ones to figure I mean, it out. Right. That's exactly right. And the kids need to be able to pick what's the right device for the task at hand. Right. I mean, that's how we work in, out in the field all the time. If I have a task, I'm not going to just use um, a specific device because it's the one that right. is in my classroom. I'm going to use whichever's the right tool for the task. And if my kids are listening, it's not Minecraft, okay? <laughs> just telling you. This is Stephanie Madlinger, Director of Education and Innovation. METC and also Education Plus. And, and let's talk about that, that Education Plus where you are bringing different school districts together as far as this technology. And I would think, although we've all got the same goal, let's mm-hmm. make our kids smart enough to pick the right retirement home for us, basically. <laughs> let's be honest. It's what it is. There's got to be some sense of competition because that's just human nature. So for schools and school districts to share resources that they're using might take some prompting sometimes, I would think. Yeah, just a little bit. With our uh, membership, as far as Education Plus is concerned, we've been around since 1928, and so our membership has expanded since then, obviously. But what's happened with METC is that ability to go beyond those school districts here locally. We have over 22 different representatives from state, 22 different states here. So what's happening is that becomes more of a local as well as a global connection. So then they're able to actually then really truly start collaborating beyond the, their own four walls and beyond the region into more of a global atmosphere. I don't know how much you guys listen to my regular show. For those that do, won't be surprised to know this. I talk a lot about food. I talk a lot about restaurants. And one thing that I always find very interesting, if it's a restaurant that's got maybe a North County location and, and one in the city and one in the Chesterfield Valley, that they will vary wildly as to what they sell the most of. We're all in St. Louis, but people in North County eat a lot more meat than people in Chesterfield. So on an education level, do you find from district to district, and this could be for any of you, that the tools vary widely as to what's going to help those kids the best? Yeah, teachers can feel really isolated in their classrooms. You know, they shut the door, they have work to be done, and um, they are part of a school community, and sometimes they can get time to connect to that, but sometimes, you know, they have a hard time finding time to go to the bathroom, much less to go down the hall and talk to another teacher and ask for advice. Um, And then that isolation expands. It's even harder to get to another school, even harder to another district or another state. And so by bringing people together this way, it really allows for an exchange of ideas and allows teachers to really see what's happening in each other's classrooms. They become presenters. They become networkers. And it helps grow their own personal network of of experts that they can rely on for help. And, Bill, even within the whole Parkway School District, you've got a bunch of different educational centers there. Do you find there's a giant variance in the tools that they use as well as the results that they get? 
Absolutely, and I think one of the things that that is important about that to recognize is every community is different. And so mm-hmm. when when we work with our teachers in our different schools, we really focus on their community and the tools that are going to help fit their community. Just like you're saying, you know, there are there are variances in what people eat, whether well, it's variances in the way kids um, approach and the access that they have to technology at home and the experiences that they bring into the classroom. And so what we try to do is we try to really think about it in terms of differentiation and give them opportunities to have choice and to understand what tools will serve what purposes while not boxing them into a specific thing. Because really what it comes down to is we're not preparing our kids to perform in front of us. We're preparing them for when they leave the classroom, and that's when it really becomes important. It's not so much when, when they're sitting in front of us and we can, you know, conjole them and encourage them and all that. What we – what really matters is when they walk out our doors, how are they going to perform in their real lives? How are they going to actually be able to manage this world of technology that is ever-changing and that doesn't sit still for more than about 30 seconds? It is the METC conference going on today and tomorrow, St. Charles Convention Center. 